OP's brother ruined his relationship with a fake wedding. Humiliating OP, plus his brothers, his partners, and a guest's responses. The cast of characters. Yuxact Butterscotch 40. OP, who was publicly humiliated by her brother, New Bill, and the wedding party. Objective Coat 5D948. OP's Bill, who made an account to respond. Uslap Happy Pap. A wedding guest and friend former employee of the Bill appeared. All posts and replies are in chronological order. OP cross-posted to wedding shaming. Me 30, F and my brother 31. M have always been as close as twins. Our closeness is the foundation of our family. One of the true consistent relationships obviously not in a weird way, is that when we fight which is never or small fights, the whole family feels it and tries to fix it because of how unnatural it feels for everyone. He gave me away at my wedding. I named a child after him. We have matching tattoos. We talk on the phone almost every day. He started planning his wedding. He asked me to be a groomsman, while his friend 35-ish, F would be his best man. Everyone thought this was odd because of his role at my wedding, and none of us really know or have met his friend. I expressed how it hurt my feelings and was met with, My wedding isn't about you. Fine. I'll do what you ask. During the planning, he called me every day. We sent ideas. I helped with making stuff. I didn't mind. I decided early on to not focus on titles, but just to make this day as amazing as possible for my brother. He asked me to be the flower fairy because this was a gay, child-free wedding. I agreed. During the process of dress and shoe picking, he and the best man would shoot down all of my ideas. She would send very basic heels that were around $100. I told her my budget was $45 for shoes, especially for plain gold heels. The wedding party all had a very mean girl mentality. I felt it from day one. There was the wedding party, and then me. I chalked this up to not really knowing them well in proximity, all of them live in a different state than me. They even went as far as saying the shoes I like were, to slotty, they were the type of small heels that place up around your calf or around your ankle. After this, I begged to come as a guest, so I could wear what I wanted, and not feel this weird mean girl mod mentality from the rest of the wedding group. My brother says no way, I can't get married without you by my side. I get to the state where the wedding will be, and the first day I'm there, I find out the best man had the bachelor party the night before I got there. Everyone from the wedding party was included aside from me. I let it go and focused on the wedding and doing my part. So, I slap on some wings, dance my way down the aisle, and give my fairy first wedding speech. All goes well. The wedding was awesome until the drag show. Yes, they had a drag show at their wedding. During the show, one of the queens comes on and basically announces that this was all fake because my brother and his partner had gotten married one year prior. I turn to the rest of the wedding party and ask, did they know? They did. They were at the real wedding. Everyone but me. I'm sitting there trying to process. And my mom who gave them $3,000 for the wedding, because they needed it storms up to ask if I knew. I told her no, and she immediately switched to being supportive of me because of how bad the situation was. It's not about them already being married. They can do what they want. I myself spent over $4,000 on this wedding. Because I was coming from out of state, I had to get a plane ticket. I paid for a week at an Airbnb one night. Most of the wedding party stayed at the house I rented because they didn't have anywhere else to stay and did not even offer to pay for any of it. The dress for the wedding. The fairy wings were handmade. All of it. I spent too much time and money on this wedding. But then I started to remember all of the lies. They got married and three days later, my brother was at my house while I gave birth to my last child because I always wanted him to be a part of my huge moments. He held my newborn, knowing he had just gotten married, and said nothing. They gaslighted me, saying I was crazy and feeling left out. He's saying he can't get married without me. Lying to my face every single day for a year. Just. All of it. After realizing all of this, I tried to leave without making any sense. His husband mockingly asked me if I was mad. I said I'd talk to them another day, and they should enjoy their night. I was able to leave without anyone else at the wedding knowing I was upset. Before I could leave, the happy couple pulled me into a room. My brother was crying, saying he didn't do this to me. I kept it together and said, Enjoy the night, and we will talk another day. His husband said, Oh, so there is something to talk about then. I repeat, we can talk another day. They asked me to brunch. I say I'll see if I'm up and ready for it when they go. The next morning, I realized the whole wedding party, and some guests were going to lunch. I chose not to go because I am not going to put myself in a situation where I am ganged up on again over my feelings about the wedding and wedding party. After that, I left the wedding chat on Snap, which they were notified of. At this point, it's the next morning, 
and his husband starts blowing me and my friend who was with me up. We ignore it and go about our day. I have not looked at or spoken to my brother since, aside from short responses to get me to the airport the day I left. When I left, I asked them to crop me out of the wedding photos, as I didn't want to be associated with a fake wedding, and I didn't want a reminder of how embarrassing it was and how stupid I looked. I told them I didn't want to speak to them again. My brother says nothing, and his husband says, You're a narcissist, and I feel bad for the people who have to deal with you. Pretty sure narcissistic more aligns with tricking 100 people into coming to a wedding some of the wedding that was paid for by other people, just to tell everyone haha, this was just a giant party for us. Jokes on you are probably more narcissistic than me reacting to the time, money and energy spent to attend a fake wedding. But alright, lol. I just don't know where to go from here. I have them both blocked. There is a line in our family. My brother has not tried to fix it. He had the chance to show me what I meant to him, and he did. And now I have to believe him. I'm going to try to update section 1. I guess to answer if he is in an abusive relationship, it really is up to each person to decide. I will not, and I won't label him as abusive, because I'm not in that relationship with them. My mention of the drag queens was because they are a part of the story. Hello, was it one of the queens that made the announcement? I'm not sure why some of you are taking that as me being anything phobic. Mentioning that somebody is gay, or that drag queens attended a wedding is part of a story. And it's factual. It's not anything phobic. Our family, as well as my new husband's family, have always been nothing but supportive and accepting. My mom. My mom has two kids who are very hurt. She could never hate my brother, but she definitely does not like the decisions that he has been making. She is doing her best to support her two children. Gay wedding. No kids are allowed. Two separate statements lol. They definitely did not ban gay children from their wedding. Lol. I mentioned both of these things to explain why I was a flower fairy. No kids. Flower girl. Fairy to go along with the gay dragon theme. Hello people. I proudly slapped those wings on them and danced my way down the aisle. That is definitely not anything phobic lol. For those of you who are saying anything along those lines, you were definitely reaching and projecting. Using narcissism when it actually does not apply to the person is, in my opinion, trying to weaponize. More information is in the comments. Top questions. For some reason, I cannot edit my post to add this, so hopefully most of you will see it. Me and my new husband, as far as I know, did not have any hard feelings going into the wedding. There was a time when they were dating that I expressed that I didn't like the fact that my brother was working two jobs for a new husband to try to become a music producer. I watched my brother kill himself for years to try to support both of them, while he sat around smoking weed in his studio. And ever since then, my new husband decided that I hated him. Even though we have since squashed all of those issues when he got a job and started contributing. Even when we did not get along. I always made it very clear that my brother loved you. And I loved you too. Both families have been very supportive. There is no homophobia or anything like that on either side. Is my brother in an abusive relationship? I don't know. I guess that's what each individual person would consider abusive. I don't want to label my brother's partner unfairly as abusive when I'm not in a relationship myself and my brother has never expressed feeling abused. I think if you consider this behavior manipulative and abusive, then that's up to your own discretion. However, I am not going to give anyone that label. I didn't decide this was a fake wedding. They did when they decided to announce in the middle of the ceremony that they were already married. They called it a fake wedding when they announced that it was fake. Lol hello, five Russian bots. Pushing propaganda. Okay people I only mentioned the fact that there was a drag show at the wedding because that is a very uncommon thing. I found out that my brother had been married for a year and had been lying to my face via drag queen announcements. That is just stating the facts. That has absolutely nothing to do with the drag community or how I or anybody else should feel about them. They were paid to do a job and they showed up and did what they were paid to do. I have no ill will towards anybody in any type of community. Those of you who are saying to me that mentioning them comes off as judgmental are very much for reaching. For those of you who think it's weird that I did not mention that he was gay, why is that weird? And why is that relevant to the story lol? The people who had their pants in a wad probably have more of an issue with the community than I do. Stop making this post about anything other than what it is about. At the end of the day, I am mourning the loss of my brother. I am mourning the relationship that I thought he and I had. And to be honest, based on my perspective on our closeness, I am honestly questioning my own sanity. Do you generally spend hours talking to somebody, getting matching tattoos, planning a wedding, being on holidays, and having childbirth with somebody that you're not close with? At least on my end, 
I did not make up how close I was to my brother, if it was not reciprocated, and he is a very good actor. And honestly, questioning our closeness has been the most hurtful part of this entire experience. It's made me question if I'm crazy or not. Gay wedding. Child free. Two separate statements. It was not a wedding where they did not invite gay kids lol. For anyone who reads it like that, you are extra weird. My brother is obviously gay and got married to a man. Therefore, it is a gay wedding. Children were not allowed to attend the wedding there for free. There are two separate things, people. Both are okay. And I also want to say that I would never have slapped fairy wings on my back and danced down the aisle if I was not 100% supportive of them. Please stop trying to make this an issue other than two siblings falling out. Another comment. Okay AUO. I feel like you are very much twisting the story lol. I did not make sure everyone knew I was leaving the wedding. I actually left very discreetly at almost midnight when the wedding was ending at 1am. I did not make my brother cry. His now husband kept trying to force a conversation that I asked respectfully multiple times to not have the night of the wedding, so that way it would not ruin their day. I showed up and did everything my brother asked of me. I took the bullying, and I kept my mouth shut for most of it after I was accused of trying to make the wedding about me. From that point on, I went out of my way to do everything I could to make his day as special as I could for him. Comment about her husband. Brother, tried to contact my husband to ask how to pay back what I spent to come to the wedding. My husband said that he was not going to get involved. My brother tried to convince my husband that I was overreacting. My husband told my brother that was absolutely not true, and I have every right to be upset, and what he did was bonkers. My husband has been very supportive, but he is also very sad to see me and my brother fighting like this. Update 1. I'm the flower fairy. I'm going to do my best to put as much information as I can, but it ends up being really long, and Reddit will not let me post. So I'm going to try to answer all of the questions and I'm going to paraphrase a lot. The update is that there is no update. Things are the same. They are still blocked. One suggestion was that I should write him a letter, which I actually did the day after this happened and left in his room. I laid out all of my feelings and described them in detail. How hurt I was. We had a two-hour doctor appointment, and he said nothing after reading my letter. I did end up losing all of my manners when I landed, and my husband informed me that he sent him a message basically saying that I was overreacting. I said a lot of things that I was not very proud of. At the end of the day, I stand by my truth, and I stand by my perspective of what happened. Please stop trying to make this a phobia issue. Both families have been nothing but supportive. They represent themselves, not an entire group of people. Stop being so simple-minded. The mention of drag queens was only there because one of the queens announced that they had gotten married a year ago. Plus, how many times do you see a drag show at a wedding? If you read some imaginary undertone, that is definitely a you issue. Moving on. A new husband, in my opinion, is not somebody that I would label as abusive. However, abuse is subjective. I think this more falls down to him being very emotionally immature. I am not a yes man. I was for the wedding. That's an appropriate time to say yes man. Outside of that, my new husband has always been intimidated by my opinion. I think he knows I can see through his BS. Weak men hate strong women. That's a fact. And that's the case here. However, we did not have any type of beef on the wedding day or for years before. I made it clear that if my brother loves you and wants to spend his life with you, then I support that. My mom is trying her best to be as supportive as she can to both of her kids. She could never hate my brother, although she absolutely hates what he did. Did as far as I know. I don't know who I am without my brother. He was just as important to me as my children and my husband. It was always me and him. To say that I am mourning is an understatement. This whole situation has made me question a 30-year relationship. Realizing his capability to live a double life, that I'm not a part of has rocked my entire world and my entire sense of reality. I'm not okay. I'm going to spend the next year without contact. I'm going to go to therapy and get my mind, body and soul in the best place possible, while pushing as much good karma into the world as I can. Maybe then I will be able to decide if I want to close that door fully and permanently, or if I'm at a place where I'm willing to create a new normal with him. At the end of the day, I am absolutely devastated and heartbroken. I also want to address frequently asked questions. 1. Baby was 5 No fear of being overshadowed the date that they got married was because it was a dating anniversary for them nothing to do with me or my pregnancy. 2. I am aware that people get married and have a large ceremony later. That's okay. It's not what they did. That's how they did it. 3. I am not a Russian bot. Trying to push propaganda lol. Those comments did make me laugh though. 4. 
If I had the answer to why they would feel comfortable doing this to me, then I guess I wouldn't be as dumbfounded as I am. I'm not leaving out any type of detail. Honestly, it would be a lot easier if I did something so horrible to deserve this, because then I wouldn't have to wonder why. I'd know that at the end of the day, I'm not okay. I don't know if there's anything he could do to fix it. I'll always wonder if he's telling me the truth or what he's hiding. After the way that his husband spoke to me, and after him allowing him to do that, I'm honestly so disgusted with both of them. I deleted the original post because I didn't want them to be attacked. But sadly, I still have a need to try to protect him. I don't know you guys. The brother-in-law appeared and made a comment in the original post. Objective code 5 948 Brother-in-law here. I'll just start by saying that, for one, having a big wedding ceremony one year later was not my idea. But once we decided that we were going to do it, we consulted many times about telling people beforehand for fear of things like this happening. I've never had a great relationship with OP, but we've tried to make things work mostly for my husband her brother, because I knew they were very close. And while I wasn't too fond of her due to our interactions in the past, I know how important those close relationships are, and would never wish to tear them apart. OP didn't want to talk about it at all. We tried to apologize and explain that the intention was never for any humiliation or insult to anyone at all. But she wouldn't have any conversation about it, especially the night before. The next day at the Airbnb, I tried to open a dialogue with OP about how she was feeling, and she only responded with snark and comments about how, there's nothing to talk about. That's the small conversation where the, so there is something to talk about statement was made by me. I eventually let it be and left the room. Everything that was said by her didn't help me or anyone understand really how she felt about it, and the little she did say seemed very self-centered, and about how this was a plan to humiliate her specifically, which it was most definitely not. Reading through this now though, I do understand a bit more why she felt that way. And for that, I truly am sorry. Anyway, I'm not entirely sure how these work, or if there's a proper way to post this, but ask me anything. Yuxak Butterscotch 40 reply. All I am going to say is that you both are married now, and you made your choice. You both are in a partnership. You both collectively decided to do this, and decided it was a good idea, and the consequences are. I want nothing to do with either one of you ever again. That's it. There is no reason or purpose to keep having an open dialogue about this because it's done. And you starting out your post with the fact that you don't like me pretty much confirmed everything that I said. I wish you and him nothing but happiness, but this conversation is over. I've heard your side of things, and it still isn't good enough to justify what you both did. And I'm choosing to walk away from both of you. Yuxact Butterscotch 40 made another reply. He admits in the text above that he knew. He literally says we didn't want to tell people because they were there and happy. He knew what he was doing. It was a huge manipulation. Lying to people to get what you want is manipulation. Omitting things from people to not give them the power to make a fair choice is also very much manipulation. They knew what they were doing. In the sentence, the other people said, brother doesn't value sister the same way. That's it. That's the end of the argument. They both showed me exactly what I meant to them. The motivation behind it is not really important anymore. Maybe this was just a total oversight or mistake, but regardless, the result was the same, and the consequence remains the same. I want nothing to do with y'all. I wish you happiness because I will always love you. If you make him happy, then I am so happy for the both of you. Truly, I am. Our relationship was the sacrifice for this day, and you both decided to make it. I reacted to it, and was trying to sort through my feelings by posting on this podcast. I did not expect it to go viral, so for that I am sorry. I did try to remove the post, but it was too late. I realized that, you don't like me due to past interactions. And that's fine. So what I am about to say won't matter. My heart is completely shattered. I'm literally going through a mourning process like someone died. Because that night, the relationship N and I had did die. He has always been my person. He isn't now. And I've never felt more alone. I honestly don't know if I'm going to be okay. Both of your responses just confirm everything I said and everything I felt. You have your side. I have mine. But ultimately, everyone is feeling the loss of me and N. This changes everything in the family. I'm going to continue to root for both of you. Always but I am going to do it from my side of the world. In an emergency, either of you can call me, and I'll be there. But outside of that, I am good to both of you. You don't like me, I'm out of your life now. You don't get to defer to N when it comes to me. But you want to orchestrate our conversation after he did what he did. You are not a safe place for me. Just like I'm sure you feel like I'm not either. You win. Go be with N. Go have a happy life. Eight Marshmallows commented on the bill. I have some questions. 
Why did the brother not tell her you were married for an entire year? I get surprised by most of the guests, but his sister. And mom. It feels very mean. I know people who hold secrets as a method of punishing the other person. And this is definitely in that territory. Even your mom told you to tell them. Why wasn't OP allowed to back out of the wedding party? And it sounds like you were aware of how poorly this would go ahead of time, but still chose to follow through on the plan. Did you really call her a narcissist? I get that you didn't intend to cause harm or humiliation, but you didn't do anything to prevent it either. You decided that everyone else's reaction was their own fault or responsibility, which is pretty callous. She was probably too upset to articulate her feelings adequately at the time, so it was too soon for a conversation, based on his reactions, and the way this was planned out. It all sounds like maybe her brother does not actually value their relationship the same way she does, and she needs to let it go. Objective Code 5 the 9 48 The decision to keep it a secret was, in hindsight, a bad choice, I'll admit openly for sure. As for the rest of it, it's tough because, while it was definitely tense between us, I never wanted to make anything worse. So if I ever had to deal with OP in any way, I would always defer to her brother on how to do so. Reading all of this was the first time I've ever heard about her wanting to back out of the wedding party. So when it comes to that, I have absolutely no idea. To be honest, I am a diagnosed ADHD haver. So I'm not super great at planning. And anyone who knows both of us knows my brother, is the type of planner. So I wasn't as involved in the wedding part of planning thing. I wish I had said what I said in a different way. But yes, I did say that after she refused to talk to anyone for two days, and once her brother dropped her off at the airport, she decided to put us both in a text group chat and absolutely go TF off about how she could say her piece and stand by her truth, and she wouldn't hear a word of anything else from anyone else. I know it was mean, and at the time, I did want to convey that. I wish I hadn't said it, but it's too late. About the surprise, hindsight is 2020. I was very fearful of a grand upset, and I'm pretty sure my brother was too. We talked about it. But it was like one of those things where someone texts you, and you forget to text back. And then after a while, it's just too awkward to say anything because it's been too long. Obviously, the magnitude of these things is vastly different, and I'm aware of that. But when we decided we were going to do it, we just stuck to our guns, and the time just flew by. And before you know it, it's the week of the wedding, and people are here from out of town, and there's so much to do. And by that point, we thought about telling specifically her, and some other key family members. But figures will it's been so long already. And rather than have a possible huge blowout that could be so bad, it could maybe result in the wedding not even happening. Everyone seems happy right now, so we'll just wait and hope for the best. And well here we are, dumb decisions were made, and that sucks. That comment is the only mean thing I said to her the entire week. And it was after trying so hard to smooth things over specifically with her and brother and getting co shoulders to her, followed by weird accusations. She can hate me, and that's fine but my brother doesn't deserve the vitriol that was omitted by the OP's posts, and I was hoping for things to work out. The section above was particularly my perspective at the time, given that I only had a little bit of her perspective that I had to filter through all the anger it contained. I feel a bit more sympathetic now. To be honest, I still don't agree with everything, but I understand more now. And again, I'm sorry for how painful it really was. I wish things could have been done differently. I really do. Sorry for the huge run on sentences. The beturble. So now you're placing the majority of the blame on your husband, OP's brother. Way to be a partner to your new husband. I have ADHD. How does that absolve you from being a person? The only truthful thing I'm seeing here is that you didn't really like OP due to past interactions. Objective coat 5 the 9 and 48. I'm not placing blame on anyone. I'm just saying what happened the ADHD doesn't absolve anything, nor was it intended to. I'll admit my part of the wrong, but I didn't mastermind anything like everyone is assuming I did. We made a dumb choice that led to hurt, and I truly apologize for that. But I won't just let 3k people accuse me of something I didn't do without at least trying to clarify from my point of view. There's a whole arc of SHT between me and OP from years ago that was left completely out of all her posts, and she knows that. Final comment from the bill. Alright? Well, I've said my bit, I've apologized, and I tried to smooth things over as much as I had the ability to. I don't have any will towards anyone, and I never will. It wasn't supposed to hurt anyone but it did, and that stinks like major booty. I didn't mastermind anything. This wasn't my idea. I said a mean thing in the end after being blasted in the texts. No one's perfect. You've made up your minds about me from a one-sided perspective, and that's okay. This is Reddit. At the end of the day, all the people who have opinions on this in the comments weren't there. And I don't know the people involved at all. I wish you all the best with your future endeavors. Efarn, I really do mean it. But yeah, 
Another member of the wedding party posts. This person deleted their comments. Comments were saved. A slap. Happy pap. Welp. I was at this wedding, though I was not a member of the wedding party. I agree that a lot of what happened with OP on this is messed up. But I'm calling bullshit on some of the things that were said by her brother's husband. Or at least the tone it was said in. Or the way it was interpreted, maybe. That man might just be the most stand-up guy I know. He quickly became a best friend of mine when he became my boss over a year ago. I've seen him go above and beyond to help out people he's not even fond of. The only scenario in which I see him doing these types of things is if OP says some things she's omitting from the post. The second thing I'm calling bullshit on. The entire wedding party was not at lunch the next day. I was there, and two members of the six were present. OP's brother's best man was there, as was one other. There was a plan for everyone to go, but everyone had their own thing they needed to do. Lots of stuff needed to be driven around, etc. Again, what happened with OP was messed up. Even from the point of view I heard it from, it was her brother's husband. And I'm sure I know probably 10% of what actually went down with all of this. But there's a side to every story. In this case, there's more like four. Her not being at their actual wedding makes sense given that she had just moved to the East Coast and the wedding was on the West Coast. That, and as she mentioned, she gave birth three days later. If it were Walwari Sis, he would have known at least. And she would have been the best man for me at the wedding party. But that's me. I wouldn't be surprised if some of this was exaggerated based on what I know. Which again isn't much. Lejusa Juice replied. There are always two sides to a story, for sure. But let's take away all the narrative and leave the main issues here. OP spent a lot of time, effort, and money on the wedding. Having been led to believe the whole way through the process that it was a real wedding when the rest of the people all knew except for her that it wasn't. She was led to believe that she was one of the most important people. She did what was asked of her by a fairy dancing down the aisle, which not everybody would have the guts to do. Only then had it sprung on her that it was all fake in a humiliating way. Man, I'd be so gutted. By doing what they did and how they did it, she probably feels really hurt, and like they took away her important part in the wedding in those few seconds. And then she realized she was the only one who didn't know. Oof. Kick a fairy when she's down. It really could have been far better thought out. I'll be honest, I would feel like the butt of the joke, and really, really embarrassed. I think most people would. We all make mistakes, and some damage control is certainly needed to rebuild bridges. I hope they work it out. I don't know what I'd do without my brothers and sisters in my life. Oslafapapap. 100%. And I agree with just about everything you said. My point is that she made assumptions about at least two things. One of which was the lunch I was at. She assumed it was a big lunch that included everyone but her, when that was far from the case. It was me and three others. I picked where we ate five minutes before we went. I did nothing more than attend the wedding and stay overnight, because I drove 90 minutes there. And most of the actual wedding party wasn't present at that lunch. In fact, the grooms said they weren't going because they wanted to talk to and spend time with OP. So what else did she make assumptions about? I know she's assumed her brother's husband put him up to this, and that it was all his idea. She said that in the comments. This was not the case at all. The whole thing about not telling anyone was her brother's idea. Again, to reiterate, she's valid in feeling the way she does about a lot of these things. And again, I know way less than she does, or her brother, or her brother's husband. But I'm willing to bet that if she and her brother had a conversation about it, a lot of the air would get cleared. Would it completely mend her wounds? No. But they both should be willing to do that. I'm surprised to hear he didn't talk at all in the car with her. That's unfortunate. And to be clear, I don't know OP. We shook hands and introduced ourselves at the beginning of the wedding. That's the extent of my knowledge of her. Clearly, I'm biased because I know her brother's husband well, and her brother pretty well at this point too. Slap, happy pap, left one final comment. Well, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. As for me, I'm out of this SHT show. Update 2. Moving on. If you're reading this, you're here because you are super invested in my family's tea. Well, but really, I'm okay, I'm going to be okay, or maybe I won't. Either way, I am going to keep moving forward. And if you want to come along with me, you can follow me on TikTok. I'm not trying to be an influencer. I'm just going to use it as a diary, coping tool, or safe space. My name on there is TKR29. Note. Yuxact Butterscotch40 has so far posted videos of her in the dress she wore to the wedding, as well as her thoughts on what happened that night after the announcement was made, such as the wedding party looking at her to make a scene, which OP did not do. Another video shows OP talking about attending the wedding with her brother's father, who sad her as a child. Mama P. London. Ida. I transcribed OP's TikTok. OP.
Okay, this will probably be like my last post about this hopefully. But one thing I realized when I got home was. Okay, I'm just going to ask a question. What would it take for you, if you were sawed, um, as a child under the age of 10, to get in a room with the person who did it to you? Would you go there for your brother's wedding? Because I did. Yeah, his dad. His biological dad. They split up. She had me. They got back together. Yeah, this dude like smooshed my SHT in my childhood. And I went around him for my brother. And it was like he knew that I felt like I was sacrificing my dignity for that. Like, I don't get it. But I also want to say that that was like, not on the forefront of my mind when all this went down. I had realized it a few days later, like the sacrifices I made for this. I really feel like I sacrificed my integrity and my morals to be around this dude. I'm, and if the wedding was not going to be child-free, my kids would not be there because this other person was there. Um, but yeah, like him. I didn't want to sit anywhere near him. I don't want him to think that they can come up to talk to me. Which he didn't. But I had said from a young age that I would never be around him. He will never be around myself, my children, or any part of my life, because of his disgusting Spanish smile. And yeah. And it's just like, I don't know, that probably is the most disgusting part about the whole thing. Aside from like everything else, that's just an added layer of like, you're effing disgusting. Update. It's been six months. Flower fairy update. I wish I could be writing that my brother had begged for my forgiveness. Things somehow managed to go back to how they were. But they haven't. Nothing in my situation has changed. The only thing they truly changed was my perception of someone I thought I knew. I know a lot of people can't understand because you're not close with a sibling. But this has been like a true death for me. And sometimes my grief is so big that I don't know what to do with it. He hasn't reached out. He hasn't explained. He hasn't even cared if I'm being fully honest. And what a mind F that has been. To go from someone being as important to you as your husband and children to them, showing you over and over how little you do and ever did mean to them. He has doubled down on, I didn't do anything wrong and you're overreacting, which is honestly just the biggest slap in the face. If someone can't admit they did something wrong, then they will never actually be sorry, and the chances of their behavior repeating themselves are sky high. A lot of you pointed out that our relationship might have only been this important to me, and I think you all were right. For a long time, I cried every day. I cried during the times we would normally talk on the phone, or when a song reminded me of him. And sometimes I've cried for no reason at all other than just feeling like there is a hole in me now. But I find myself crying less and less. And sometimes, when I think of him, my first thought that follows will be, Wow, it's been days since he has even crossed my mind. And I guess that's progress, right? I'm not crying every day anymore. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't still shedding tears. Tears he doesn't deserve, but they come anyway. Because that's the thing about unconditional love. It still exists, even when the other person breaks your heart. It doesn't go away. But sometimes the other person can just no longer have access to the unconditional. We have spoken. Briefly. Over the phone during the holidays to deal with a family emergency involving another family member, it was pretty much all business. Everyone around us kept saying, I'm so glad you guys are talking again. But we weren't talking again. We were just dealing with business. And I guess that's all the talking we will ever do again. At one point, my husband chimed into our phone conversation and told him how much he misses him too and he cried. I guess I forgot I wasn't the only one losing someone, but either way, that doesn't change anything. My kids have not even noticed. He did try to send Christmas gifts to them through my mom, but only because I said something about him, not acknowledging my son on his birthday. So is that all he'll ever be? Impersonal generic gifts that my kids get once a year. I told my mom to send them back, and that they didn't need a gift uncle. Honestly, they have my husband's side on my husband's side. With that realization, I came to the realization that if you don't have a good, respectful relationship with me, you absolutely do not get access to my children. And to be fully honest, he never really took that much interest in my kids anyway. I know he cares and loves them, but as far as a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with them, let's just say the extent of how much he got to know them was always me telling him about them. There really wasn't a deep, established relationship between any of my kids and him. And with him, not being on good terms with me or my husband. I'm not going to allow him access to my children, and I would honestly feel the same way and react to anyone this way. If someone shows you over and over again that they do not love and respect you, why would you allow them access to your kids? Especially if all they are is a gift once a year. I'm not healed. But I am on my way. It's not better, but it's getting better. I feel I am suffering the consequences of someone else's actions. I was spiraling, but I am finding my new normal. I'll update again at the one-year mark. Thank you for watching the video.
If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.